All right, let's say you want to do a qualitative research study. But who do you recruit to be participants in your study? Well, this is called sampling, and that's what we're going to learn about today. Ba -da -da -da. Welcome to another journey with Chris, where we will obtain new levels of knowledge and awesomeness. Hello, scholars. Today, we're going to journey through qualitative research sampling. On our journey, we're going to cover convenient samples, purposeful samples, and theoretical samples. A convenient sample is a sample of participants that were convenient for the researcher to recruit for a study. This type of sampling is considered the least scientific and it really lacks intellectual credibility. For example, let's say a researcher who is a college professor is interested in conducting a phenomenology, studying participants' meaning of their experiences, with homelessness. That's the topic that they're interested in. The college professor who is a researcher decides to sample those who are convenient to recruit for the study, so he or she recruits students from the classes that they're teaching. Well, odds are that the experiences with homelessness of college students, it's probably just that they've seen homeless people out of their car window, or maybe they had a family member or friend who was homeless. And that's probably about all the experience they have with homelessness. Well, that's not as good as compared to if the researcher would have put in the time and have become inconvenienced by pounding the pavement and getting to know some homeless people and interviewing them. Which leads us to purposeful sampling. A purposeful sample is a sample of participants that were thoughtfully, purposefully recruited in order to fully answer the research question. So, in our last example, the researcher who was out pounding the pavement and getting to know homeless people, that would be a, a purposeful sample. Recruiting a sample of people who are currently homeless. There's a lot of different ways of sampling that falls underneath purposeful sampling, and one is snowball sampling. A snowball sample is a sample of participants that are recruited by researchers by asking well-informed people to identify other people who are relevant to the study and might be interested in participating in the study. So in our example, let's say the researcher is out pounding the pavement, getting to, hom getting to know homeless people, and they interview a homeless person. After the interview, the researcher says, do you know any other homeless people that might be interested in participating in the study? That's snowball sampling, getting your participants to identify other people who could be participants. An emergent sample, also known as an opportunistic sample, is a sample of different participants that the researcher decides to recruit during the process of collecting data. This is that emergent design that we talked about earlier, earlier in the course. This commonly occurs in the field as the researcher gains more knowledge about the study and its emerging themes and decides to take advantage of the opportunities that unfold during the study. So, for example, maybe some of the homeless people know people who used to be, who were formerly homeless. Hmm, that's, that would be good to take advantage of that opportunity. That's an emerging group of participants that could be re recruited. People who were just formerly ho homeless, that would be great for that study. A maximum variation sample is a sample of participants that have a variety of characteristics of interest to the researcher. Often, researchers want to understand how a phenomenon is experienced among different people in different times or locations, settings. So maximum variation sampling allows researchers to maximize the diversity of information so to, in order to answer that research question, which is kind of similar to our last example. What if by the opportunistic emergent design that the homeless people said, well, we know some formal, former homeless people, that helps us to have a maximum variation sample, people who used to be homeless too. That gives more variety to our sample of participants. The extreme deviant case. This is a case that's highly unusual and it's considered an outlier. So researchers find a case, this is more for case study, of that would be unusual or, or an outlier. This can help in a way um, give a variation to the, the study that's being conducted. This is, on the other hand, there's the typical case, and this is a process of, of, uh, of, of doing a sample of a case that's not in any way extreme or deviant. This is your typical, usual type of case. Depending on if you want to do an extreme or deviant case or a typical case, is up to the researcher and which would be best for answering their, answering their research question. And now let's talk about theoretical samples. A theoretical sample is most often used for grounded theory studies. And just as a recap, it's a sample of participants who are recruited because they have experienced whatever the processes of interest and they can help to develop a very well-rounded theory. 
within the theoretical sampling is something called a discriminant sample. And this is usually also for grounded theory studies. And just as a recap, this is a new group of participants who are recruited to see if their experiences with the process of interest falls within line of the theory that was created in the grounded theory study. This can help to test and verify that this newly created theory is accurate or not. In conclusion, there are several ways of recruiting a sample of participants for a qualitative research study, including convenience, purposeful, and theoretical samples. Thanks for a great journey, and I'll see you in class.